Hello and welcome to our EV meeting. Here you can see who is presenting tonight. It's a very long presentation or uh, meeting, it's about two hours, so if you don't want to watch the whole thing or listen to it, just pick out what you want to look and listen to. A little disclaimer from the friendly folks at Kia. And in our pre-meeting, we have looked at the Kia Soul EV because nobody really was giving a presentation at that point about the car. These are just a couple of images where you can see what's under the front hood. You can look and see it has a Chatamo and an L2, L1 plug. There was a little presentation information tablet there. But this is a pre-production model, so just don't forget that um, it can change a lot, or a little bit at least. Uh, view inside the car. Looks like a regular Kia. I could probably not tell the difference with this car if I wouldn't see a little uh, sticker where it says electric. So it's a pretty roomy car. You pretty, sit pretty much straight upward. A compact car. A look here now in the back. Very interesting. Once I lift up this tray here, there is a blower for blowing air across the batteries. And then I think probably the repair kit for tires and the L1 emergency charger. Another view in the front. Not much difference there. And we're almost done with the Kia here. But it has the B setting for regenerative braking. So that's nice. And then I think we just have a view from the back, Eco Electric. And our meeting should start any second now. Hope you enjoy it. Well, thank you for uh, uh, coming out. Thank you for SMUD for providing some nice air conditioned facilities. Let's give, let's give a round for SMUD just for being a partner. Thank you. And uh, uh, restrooms are, if you haven't been here before, are just right out to the, to the right here. So if you need to take a break, please feel free to do so. Uh, we normally start off our meetings with a bit of trivia to let everybody get settled. I'd like to kind of maybe constrain the initial uh, trivia questions to those that are new for the first time, just to give it, uh, the, our new members uh, a little bit better shot at this. So who is, who is actually new to this meeting? the SAC EV uh, bi-monthly meetings for the first time? Raise your hand. No, you're George. <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> Raise your hand if this is your first meeting. All right, you're the eligible pool for the, uh, the trivia contest. I've never been here before. Yeah. <laughs> no, just because the car is new, Matt, doesn't mean that you're <laughs> OK, so um, we're working on getting this up. PowerPoint or yeah, right, PowerPoint's right there on that. So the first question uh, is, motor vehicles are to blame for what, what part of California's air, air pollution? What, what percent? Well, I'll give you a couple choices here. You got, um, whoa, I, the real small printing here. <laughs> minor, minor amount, about a third, more than half, 95, 150%. Pardon me? Next. Third. No. 95. 95. Who said 95? OK, so the, the awards are, by the way, I wanted to point these out, right? It's a good time to do it. Because we have two uh, gift certificates from uh, Dirt Busters Car Wash, uh, $26 each. We have, um, for those of you who don't have the comprehensive insurance, We've got a chip repair, a glass on your, your windshield. <laughs> Same place again, 
car, uh, Dirt Busters car wash, uh, a EV t-shirt, and uh, you get to essentially choose from those. I thought we had something else here. No. Nope. All right. So um, feel free to take what, if there's any of these you'd like. Well, the, shirt looks really cool, the car wash. The car wash is practical. <laughs> Well, again, thank you for dirt, to dirt Busters. They've got three of them around. Okay. Uh, how many, here's, a, this is almost a trick question, so this may have to go out to a broader audience. How many Tesla drivers and passengers have died in uh, Tesla crashes? No board members answering this. No. Want to try, anyone else want to try? Nope. A lot of zeros in there. Two. One. One. Who said one? And why one? And you want to explain? Explain one. Just the next one, right? George, why one? You had your hand up. Because he technically was claimed to have, by the EMTs, to have died, and they resuscitated him. The idiot that took the most recent Tesla. So someone died, but they did resuscitate him afterwards. So, so. all right. Um, the chairman, if you've been listening, if you've been reading all the emails that we've been sending out, the chairman, CEO, and president of what company wrote this in a recent article? Large, <laughs> large scale transportation electrification is one of our greatest opportunities, maybe the greatest, to change America's energy future. It's a bold aspiration to be sure, but it's one that is, however distant the possibility may seem today, is within reach if we continue to pursue it. Wow, who said that? <laughs> ah, there we go. See, there we go. That's the message. Nobody else. I can simplify that list down a lot. <laughs> OK. Um, year over year, our region's sales. Year over year, how much, what's the increase? And I'll open this up to anyone. 1,200. Pardon me? 1,200. 1,200, a percentage. Oh, percentage. Year over year. 23. 23% year over year? No. Oh, come on. I'll give you the really round number. It's over 100. Over 100. All right, <laughs> Becky. All right, so everybody settle and we'll get ready to go. Ralph, thank you for getting us started here. Um, if you want to come up and claim uh, your prizes, please feel free to during the, the speech or the uh, talks. And we've got some great, great information coming up today, so hang on to your seats. And let's see, I'm thinking this is the, uh, Ralph, this is it, right? There's a mouse, maybe a mouse. Ah, there we go. All right. There's our ad for the, and by the way, if um, we were able to get like a 10 or 15% discount for SAC EV members to this car wash, would that make a difference? They've got like uh, four of them around the area. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Or you just wash your cars at home? Well, actually, let me put it this way. Raise your hands if that would be of interest. Not, no commitments, no requirements. OK, one. All right. And here's our. So we said, talked about year over year, what kind, of, what kind of success are we having? If you look in our region, over 100% year over year growth. Uh, July to June, uh, growth rates. Oh, well over 100% for the um, eight counties that are around us. I mean, look at that. That's, that's a result of you guys and your neighbors and your friends out there sharing your experience, sharing, educating the, the community, and helping uh, uh, help us uh, get the infrastructure out there. So I really, uh, I, I think, let's give a hand to all of us just for, for doing that. That's, this is a big deal. It's just consistent that way, so that we've been really doing great. And California, I mean, the Bay Area especially has been working hard at kind of in the same way, so we're not alone in doing this. Um, 
And since we talked about, uh, you know, we're making this thing happen, it really is true. It's, it's volunteer work. It's a passion that you guys have and the others in the organiza organization. So there's a number of, uh, of uh, areas I'd like you to be thinking about to see if you'd be, areas that you might be interested in helping. Um, don't go, don't volunteer in somewhere that wouldn't sound fun to you, but pick an area that says, hey, that, that could be interesting, that could be fun, talking to people or planning or organizing such, you know. Think about these, and on the back when you signed in, if you haven't done so, please do so. There's, there's area to circle things that you might be interested in, or just note those down. George, yeah. Yeah, and I want to second that. Um, there's a very small coterie of people that have been sort of trying to make this all happen over the last couple of years. And one of the things that we recognize and we certainly need more energy is from new members coming in with their own perspectives and their own needs and their own goals. So, you know, as I'm a psychologist and one of the critical things is please look around and do not assume that the person next to you will be the person that steps up because that's just distributed irresponsibility. We really need and depend on all of us to come together as a synergy, not a martyrdom of Guy and four other people. So, and, and, but I do see a lot of people doing some great work, and I, and I do want to show, tell you that I really am appreciative of those that are stepping up, and I'd like to see. And this stuff is fun. Uh, it's fun just because it's fun talking to people. Different people have different interests in what they like to do. But it's, uh, you might find a lot of fun in just engaging, talking to people, like sharing your own experience. Um, you're changing the world here. We're changing in our region first, but we're having an impact, as you've seen. So uh, here's one. Uh, if you like art, here's a way to blend uh, EVs and art. There's an art walk uh, up in Auburn that's um, a number of different uh, uh, small uh, sort of private venues right inside downtown, old, down, old town of Auburn, uh, coming up on the, 19th, on the 14th. Oh, it's a Thursday evening, so it's a nice thing. So uh, follow up with David if you. Uh, Don't ask me anything right now because I just found out about this hours ago. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but he will be well informed. Uh, coming up this next, uh, in September again, will be our third, well actually it's fourth, the first one was in Davis, uh, be the fourth uh, plug-in day that we've held and each year we've blown away the year prior. And last year we did over 700 miles of test drives, we did, uh, uh, we did over, seven, uh, over 200 test drives themselves, 250 test drives. We brought in to the, uh, the mall, the, the outdoor um, uh, open, uh, premium outlet mall in Folsom with another 4,000 people or so. So uh, it, was a, it was a big deal. It was a crowd. We had terrific partners there, including SMUD, the Air Quality District, the, um, um, the, the different dealerships, solar, uh, just a variety, Hopped Electric, just a number of great partners out there. We're working on finalizing the venue and the date. Uh, but just so we want to, if you keep in mind, uh, Saturday, uh, probably September, somewhere around the 20th in there, um, we'll have this event. So uh, keep your eyes open for the mail message coming on this. And uh, another event here, Yosef, can you come up and uh, share a little bit about this? Okay, great. Um, so next week on Thursday, um, the, on the 17th of, of July, Bonnie's having the, her Tesla event. I know you all know of that, but additionally, we have um, an event called Smart Fuel. So we're bringing together um, alternative vehicles and alternative energy um, sources. And so those are all, um, we have a festival that's taking place at McKinley Park. And um, at that event, um, we're going to display City of Sacramento's Green Fleet out there, um, along with Atlas Disposal and um, Regional Transit mixed in with a bunch of EVs, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Um, so another big showcase for the audience. Additionally, when we go inside, um, then we're um, mixing in about 200 people um, where we're going to be creating a, an infographic together, um, talking about um, what it is um, that is smart fuel, um, what are people doing around smart fuel, and then connecting to see where, where, they, where they're connected on that map and then see how they can um, potentially explore other areas of using smart fuel. So maybe someone is considered solar or they think it's a good idea. They've considered composting, but that's actually mixed in very much the same thing with electric vehicle. 
uh, market. And so um, we're, we're trying to cross-pollinate many different interest groups to expose new people to these ideas. Um, so um, that's from 5 to 6.30 is the festival. We'd love to have you in your vehicle there. Um, and then please come inside. And if your vehicle's there, you get free tickets, come on in. And it's only $10 um, per person otherwise to be inside. Um, and this graphic itself, when it's created, is um, we're taking that, and as a, as a nonprofit um, that I have called Sacramento Sustainability Forum, we're using that to take that into organizations and institutions and, and use that as, as a, like a, a tool to talk through what is smart fuel and how does that relate to you and what can you do in your life. So I'd um, we'll love to, to have you there and to participate in the conversation. And something to be really interested in, Carzar is doing a, a production of the evening, so they're doing a 30-minute spot um, thanks to Clean Cities Coalition support um, to, to come out and do that show um, of telling the story of EVs. So we have a, a Volt with Lloyd Levine. He's a moderator. Um, he's doing a, a test drive along with a Smart and then um, along with a, um, a Nissan Leaf. Um, and so um, with that, they're going to time the story. Hopefully, we'll be coming out to visit Bonnie's place too with the 70 plus Teslas that are out there and to kind of tie in the story of smart fuels that are taking place in Sacramento. And the headline is um, smart fuels. Sacramento's smart fuels are leading the nation, and we really are in many different ways here. Um, so um, thank you for being a part of all of this, and I really appreciate um, what you're doing. Thank you. Any questions? No? Yeah. Um, it's 5 to 6.30 is the festival, and 6.30 to 8.30 is the event indoors. Um, and that's where we have networking, food, engagement, um, a lot of great sp I didn't mention some of the speakers, unfortunately. We're, we're going to miss Keith, um, but we have a representative for him, which is Andrea Stevenson from um, Atlas Disposal, Atlas Refuel, um, along with um, Lloyd Levine's the moderator um, for the evening, um, with Rafe from SACOG, Bill Boyce from SMUD, um, and then um, last we have Chris White from California New Fuel Cell Partnership. So a great lineup, similar to Clean Cities um, um, lineup that they had recently, um, and they're all going to be on a panel um, discussing together what is the smart fuel infrastructure developing, what makes us leading in the nation, what, what are we doing well. Um, then we break out into that session, talk about ideas, write those ideas down. Um, then at the very end, um, Lloyd Levine is I'm talking for 30 minutes to around. Um, he's an amazing. If you haven't heard Lloyd speak, he's, he's incredible. So I really look forward to, to have him um, share his topic on smart fuels and EVs. So thank you. And I have to step out, unfortunately. If you see me, I'm a, I, I so much want to be here. I, I love Zach and I'm happy to, to be a part of the board. But I have another event I'm speaking at in 30 minutes, so thank you. Okay. You know, the things that are going on in this area with smart fuel are just amazing. How many people have heard of, um, uh, maybe you've heard of uh, farm, to, I mean, fork to farm to fuel? Or, well, no, actually, there's fork to, to farm to fork to fuel. And I say extend that to Ford's focuses. Electric. Uh, how many people have heard of that? Good. Good. I see several out there. Uh, it's just amazing to be able to take a restaurant, uh, not just uh, locally produced food at a restaurant, but also then take the, the leftovers from that, convert that into natural gas, and send it right out to the uh, city vehicles. Yeah. Hey, I'll just mention that guy. Um, thanks to the fleet. Um, he's fleet that they're going to be out there displaying, showcasing these huge utility vehicles ran off the food waste and at the events people are bringing their own food waste and then so that's being taken to the cleaning road facility at the disposal of that and turning that into the fuel that those huge vehicles that the city center runs off. So it's really incredible. It's a full cycle. Uh, people get to actually participate and bring their own food and that turns into fuel. So, so, so have dinner before the event. Don't require the kids to clean the plate. I mean clear the plate. They can leave stuff on it, bring it in and we'll convert it to uh, natural gas. Um, there's, uh, we have a number of cards up here, I believe, as well. Some, uh, for those people that are at events and they want to be able to hand someone a, a contact card to SAC EV, come up and pick up one of these cards. Also mention that David's got some uh, SAC EV shirts here. Uh, if you want to pick one up, uh, especially they're getting ready, nice long sleeve for the warm weather. <laughs> but there are some, uh, some nice quality stuff there. So stop by David and i uh, pick some of that, take a look at some of that. Um, okay. Uh, these events that we've mentioned, they're up on the SAC EV website. There's a calendar. Just keep checking out the calendar if you're wondering what's going on. We try to keep that current with contacts and if, who to bring or who to uh, discuss things with. So, uh, Jim. Tell you what, I'll get started with my little 
song and dance, and uh, hopefully we can catch up with the slides. So here's the deal. Um, maybe some of you know that I've started a little company that involves EV charging. And I'm happy to say that David Link is helping us with that project a lot. Also, Jay Borges here is a new member, and he's helping us. And we're asking for your help. And I passed out some questionnaires here. We think we have an idea for a really great charger. And I'd like to tell you just the really short version of what it is and how it works. And then have you guys fill out the forms, if you don't mind, and give them to me by the end of the meeting. I'd really, really appreciate your input. You're the best input that we possibly have. And if that's not enough, we have some fabulous prizes here. So you guys can uh, get one of these before you leave. And we'd really appreciate it if you would do that. So I'm going to keep it really brief here. But um, just to give you an idea of what our vision is for this new type of charger, um, you know, we all know that we have the level twos that take a long time to charge. And we know that we have the very expensive DC fast chargers. But we think that there's a type of a charger that kind of fits in the middle here. So I'd like to kind of show you what we have in mind here. This is a DC fast charger that actually has some batteries in it. That allows you to do a very short charge time in the area of 5 to 15 minutes. And you're, we're not trying to completely fill the car. Because in a lot of applications, all you need is maybe another 15 miles. Maybe that's enough you know, for, to, to get you home with a you know, full tank or whatever. Uh, and these are very affordable. So, and this is also a patent pending design. I guess I mentioned that. So I'm not going to go into too much of the details about how it works, but here's, here's our vision of, you know, who would want chargers like this. These are, these are like retail companies where you don't spend a whole lot of time. You know, maybe you spend five minutes getting your Starbucks or 15 minutes getting, going to Walmart or any number of retailers like this. And we think that retailers are going to be much more enthusiastic about our charger than they would be a, like a level two, where they have to, where people are going to sit there for three or four hours in the parking lot and take, take up a parking place. So we think this is a, you know, a, a good marketing way to go. And it's also a good way to get more chargers out there. So we're, we're kind of interested in what your feelings are. Does everybody sort of understand the concept of what these chargers are supposed to do? They're very fast. They give you a limited amount of charging. If you imagine going to Starbucks, you pull up to the space. Let's say you have a customer loyalty card, or maybe you have your Starbucks app on your iPhone. That starts the charger. You get your coffee. In eight minutes, you should have about 15 miles when you come back out again. So that's sort of the concept we're, we're trying to present. And we're trying to get from you hey, does that sound like something that would be useful to you or not? So um, if you guys can just sort of walk through these four questions, shouldn't take too long, but we'd like to know, and this is mainly for EV drivers right now, but we'd like to know, does your EV currently have DC fast charge? Whether it's Combo or Chatham or whatever. If you could go ahead and just start filling out, that would be great so you don't forget to do that. But um, Neos No would like to have it in the future. Maybe you think you, you, you won't need fast charge. Yes? Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, sitting right on my, in the brown folder. Do you have a business model for the pricing for such service? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, right now, we're mainly interested in looking at it from the, the EV driver's side. Are, are you talking about pricing to the host business or pricing of, of, the, of the recharge? Of the recharge. Um, we, Typically, uh, this much charge would cost about 60 cents. So uh, it's sort of up to the host business whether they want to just comp that or, or charge you. So we, we, we don't know about that. That's all I can say. About that. So we call these around town chargers. If they're available and you have uh, fast charge on your car, would you use them? What do you think? Uh, yes, often, maybe, occasionally, maybe never. If you could just give me your opinion on that, we'd sure appreciate that. And we're trying to get a feeling for how often people actually, you know, st stop at these types of stores and businesses. And uh, if you want to think about banks and grocery stores, convenience stores, 
how many times do you do that in your RV, of course? Uh, <laughs> maybe not very often, once a day. I'd say I'm in the 8 to 20 times a week category. Uh, so if you could kind of check off, you know, what applies to you. Last question is, uh, do you personally feel that if we had more of these chargers around that work on this principle that uh, we might actually increase the adoption rate of EVs and the sales? So that would be the, the last question we have. And uh, we'd, I'd love to hear any suggestions or comments that you have, what you think about the idea. And so that's basically it. After you give me your, uh, your form, you get a fabulous prize. In, in your business model, with the, since you're doing the DC charging, would you have someone at the facility sort of trained and no, that's, using it? No, that's not the business model, okay, you know. That's the one, the, my one observation with the DC chargers, they're not as friendly as the, the others to hook up the... Uh -huh. Let's talk about that because I'd like to know technically what you mean by that. Because it it's just look, you know, it's just it's a little more complicated to do it. And I, don't, I mean, it's definitely I mean, the, the level twos are really simple to take on and off. But yeah, I, I just I don't know how many times I've gone to the DC charge and watched someone fumbling with it. Yeah, well, it's also very heavy, isn't it? Yeah, you know, so. yeah. Let's talk about that afterwards. I'd appreciate your input on that. So, any other ideas, questions? So. I'll just second. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody agrees with you. If you have any more forms, I'd like to uh, They should be in the brown binder right there. So, Tom, did you have a question? Yeah. Is this Admo only, or is it also the it's, uh, This has the capability of being either. So, uh, let's just, let's assume that it will fit your car, whatever it is. We're we're, we're planning for both combo and Chatmo. That's what we're trying to do. You know that uh, we charge our car, our, our Leaf. Predominantly at home, but I can see this for us as being a good match because on about and suddenly one more errand and, and I'm just I'm just I'm just short on a few miles and I, or I'm nervous about it. So this would take where I can stop somewhere nearby, give me five miles, ten miles. It would change range anxiety into range confidence. So uh, this would fit our our use of that. We don't. It's not as important to go somewhere and fill up our tank. It's more. When I'm out somewhere, if I just need a few extra miles, that's can I stop somewhere and quickly and inexpensively get that. So, sounds interesting, uh, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. And let's see. We reported at the last meeting that um, the uh, SAC EV and some of our partners had put in um, proposals for some California Energy Commission grants or. California Energy Commission grants, right. And that we, I'm sorry, Becky, you got? Oh, thank you. Matthew, let's do that, I'm sorry. This is important stuff too, so. Yeah, you hear it here first. Thank you, Becky, for standing up for Matthew. Thank you, Becky. That's right. How are we all doing? I see one Fiat 500e owner. Is there any other Fiat 500e owners in here? Just one? Anybody else? So I'm also a Fiat 500e owner. I'm also your local service advisor at Nilo Fiat. Uh, and uh, I'm quite excited about the product. Uh, however, some of you may have heard uh, about a recall that just came out on the Fiat 500e. So is there anybody in this room that knows someone that has a Fiat 500e? Uh, that may be affected besides him. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to speak to you tonight, uh, of course, with all the technology coming out with uh, all these electric vehicles and EVs. Uh, as a Fiat 500e owner and an EV owner, uh, I find it quite important to get the information out as quick as possible. So I just got the, uh, the recall notice two days ago, uh, and my company, Nilo, uh, we are starting a very uh, large social media blitz uh, on the recall uh, and offering a couple more uh, services to all of the Fiat 500e customers that may be affected by this. So, uh, so being EV owners, has anybody here ever experienced a recall on your electric vehicle? Never ever. Never. So, um, and was it a very pleasant experience? Yes. 
Good. So that's what we aim for in the service industry is to make sure that it is a, uh, a pleasurable experience to make sure that we get all tens on a survey and a great Yelp review. Uh, so uh, a couple of the services that we're offering, of course, is picking up your vehicle uh, and delivering it back to you once the, once the 500E is fixed. Um, the, the recall uh, in this case is the power inverter module. Uh, which is a very important part when you have an electric vehicle. It basically takes all the information from your plug-in, your adapter, uh, and transfers that information uh, to your high voltage battery. So uh, a, a uh, negative impact uh, or a failure within your power, your power inverter module can make your high voltage battery fail, uh, which is, you know, your lifeblood in this car. So uh, we are taking it very seriously. We are shutting down our, uh, our entire service facility for two days a week, focusing only on the 500Es uh, and basically kind of rescheduling our other uh, gasoline customers uh, for appointments the following week and so forth. So two days out of the week will be dedicated to the Fiat 500E, uh, to the EV owners, and also uh, providing the service of picking up and delivering your vehicle and also a full detail on your vehicle as well uh, because, you know, nobody saw this one coming. So any questions I can answer for you, and also I'll be here after the fact, so if you know of anybody uh, that has a Fiat 500E or want to take some of my business cards, you can give the information to them uh, with my phone number and everything like that. So I think I had one back here, and then I'll answer you, sir. So just in the ballpark, how many uh, 500E models are there running around in New Year's? Uh, so there's 4,100 in the state. Uh, that are affected by this. Of course, uh, California is the only state <laughs> that's affected by this uh, since Fiat's only selling these in California. Uh, we've sold 103 of these Fiat 500Es. We have 28 in our inventory, 16 of which need the recall. Um, we are expecting, uh, even though Nilo is a very great company, I've worked for it for over 11 years now, uh, uh, there are other people out there that may not have purchased the vehicle from us, which I don't care. Uh, I'm just here for service. So um, we, we estimate probably anywhere between 100 and 150 in the Sacramento area or in Northern California uh, that would have this, and hopefully they all come to us. So, your question, sir. Is Fiat planning on expanding their production of the 500 E and any talk about Gosh, I hope so. Uh, so a, a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about with my sales rep, who's the one that, uh, that told me about this recall first, um, is what's to come with the ease. Um, nothing has been disclosed yet. She envisions, hopefully, more models with the E, um, such as the cab rail um, and, and so forth, uh, different trim levels and, 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 and stuff. Right now, they're all being sold pretty much at the lounge level. There is the E Sport model, which I have. Uh, which is uh, black wheels and orange, uh, you know, racing stripes and orange uh, mirror caps, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, but uh, so they are hopefully going to be expanding to different models and different trim levels, uh, and then hopefully uh, DC because that is a um, uh, yeah we'd be kind of behind if we didn't. So that's my hope. Any other questions I can answer for you? And uh, I'll look you guys up, and I'll be here at all the meetings because I'm also a member. Oh, so appreciate it. Well, I, I appreciate having Nilo come out here and tell us about this. Oh, and also, real quick, for all EV owners, if you are in the Fulton Avenue area and you need a level two charger, we provide free charging no matter what brand vehicle you have. Uh, so, uh, all right, good. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm really glad. Of course. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, uh, actually, um, Mark, you want to come talk about the, did you want to say a few words about the vehicle uh, showing out in front or? Sure. Uh, come on up. We're also lucky enough to have uh, a Mark with the uh, California Air Resources Board. <laughs> that that uh, has brought a, uh, a cool car for us. Okay. Can you, uh, Sure. I think it's designed for an opposite direction, but there you go, in your pocket. Since I'm gonna be up here, shall I do this at the same time or yeah. this is yeah, did he get that there's Ralph? Just the change the gun tonight, Ralph. So you're looking for July 2nd EV meeting on there. Okay, so I don't know that I need this. I've always been told 
I don't need any additional help with my voice. But the car I brought today, I think virtually all of you saw it, is the 2015 Kia Soul EV. And Kia is going to be making it available not just in California, but in all of the Zeb states uh, very soon. It looks like California and Oregon beginning in September. And then next year, they'll expand to the East Coast Zeb states. And um, July. Is it on the cruiser? Yeah, it's on the cruiser. The E. Left side. Look for E. There you go. And it's going to presentations. And it's the July one. Yep, thank you. Okay, so I said Zev. Is there anyone in here who doesn't know what I mean when I say Zev? Zero emission vehicle? Okay. Zev, PEV, plug in emission, or plug in electric vehicle. It's, we speak in acronyms at the ARB because if we didn't, it would take us four times as long to get our soda across. <laughs> so, so in any case, um, the vehicle from my limited exposure to it, it looks like Kia studied the Nissan Leaf uh, very extensively. It has push button start. It has electric brakes, which was common for the 2011 and 12 Leaf before they started price cutting and went to manual uh, emergency brake. And a lot of the other features seem to be very, very similar. And we've only had the vehicle for just over a day now. We only have it for three weeks. It's been provided to us so that we can give our senior management a chance to get a feel for the vehicle. It's a pre-production vehicle, but my understanding is that the mass manufactured vehicle will be very similar. We've been told that it has a range of 80 to 100 miles. I think real world will be probably closer to 80. It has 27 kilowatt hour uh, lithium ion battery, so about 10% more battery than the LEAF. So if all else were equal, the weight is equal to the LEAF, but aero is not. If all else were equal, I would say you might expect 10% more range. We'll just have to wait and see. So any specific questions on the Kia? Yeah. Uh, they're saying 33 to 36,000 for the two trim levels. And again, there are two, uh, there's a, still a $7,500 federal tax credit in the state $2,500 rebate. So you can essentially take 10,000 off the top of that. Yeah, that's right. Right. Did he mention a lease program like they are going to lease the vehicle. They have not come up with a lease price yet. I, I suspect that they're going to have to be close to be competitive. And, and I think that, I mean, they're used to being in that end of the market. So I think that they know how to, how to play competitively. But this is not, their intention is not a 3,000 unit uh, compliance vehicle once they're going to the other test stage, right? That's my impression, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they don't have, I think that they're going to be producing in numbers greater than what they would need based on, on their requirements for the ZEV regulation, if, if they're actually going to be meeting demand in the, in the uh, especially in the East Coast ZEV states. I think that the vehicle, just because it's a more upright vehicle, uh, it's a compact utility vehicle, I think that it's going to see a lot of interest. It is an air-cooled battery. Uh, we had it open. It has a blower in the back to force air over the battery. So one step beyond the leaf, but not liquid-cooled. Uh, they, in discussions yesterday with us, said that they've had this thing in Death Valley. Uh, I think that they're still comfortable with air cooling. And that's something we're just going to have to wait and see. I think that air cooling may be satisfactory if done perfectly. For, for me in Sacramento, I've never had a problem with my battery. Uh, in 30,000 miles, I had 12 to 15 percent degradation on my leaf, but I limited charging to 80 percent virtually all of the time and never charged on a 120 degree rooftop. So, 
Okay. Well, we are talking about incentives a minute ago, and that's a good segue for me to provide you an update. Uh, two months ago, I was here telling you that not, not only did we not have money, we didn't have decals either, at least if you were getting a, a plug-in hybrid vehicle. And things have changed in those two months. And let's see here. All right. Tried to squeeze everything on one slide. <laughs> okay, so let me go through this. Uh, rebates first. Um, the board met on June 26th and adopted a funding plan. And allocations under the plan for the clean vehicle rebate program are as follows. Five million from our existing air quality improvement program. An additional 111 million from the low carbon transportation program, which is essentially the greenhouse gas uh, program. So in a, a total of 116 million available for this, for this cycle for, for um, incentives for plug-in, actually for, for all zero and near zero emission vehicles that qualify. And as you remember two months ago, there were several modifications proposed by staff to try to make this a more sustainable program. One was to lower the rebate amount for both um, pure battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids, each by $500. Uh, that was rejected, so the rebates remain as they were, $2,500 for battery electric vehicles and $1,500 for plug-in hybrids. There was also a suggestion of uh, placing an MSRP cap of $60,000. That additionally was rejected. One of the two items that was approved was to raise the rebate amount for fuel cell electric vehicles. The rebate amount for fuel cell electric vehicles was $2,500. It was doubled to $5,000. The belief of the CVRP staff, and I won't try to defend them, is that fuel cell vehicles are at the same point in their commercialization as pure electric vehicles or battery electric vehicles were when we first started incentivizing these vehicles. And just as a reminder, um, back in 2002, 2003, when the first wave of electric vehicles arrived in California, the state of California was providing $9,000 in rebates. So it's because they're earlier in their technology cycle or in their commercialization cycle and the incremental cost versus uh, internal combustion engine vehicle is, is greater. So, so the rebate amount for fuel cell vehicles is going to be $5,000. Also, I mentioned last time that there was consideration of limiting the number of rebates per, um, I don't know if it's per household or per individual, but it used to be that you were limited to no more than two rebates per year. Now it's two rebates in a lifetime. So I'm done. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of us may be done, but, but um, yes. Uh, businesses already have a different set number. And I, yeah, and I, I don't know the answer. I think right now they're, they're limited to 30 vehicles. And I don't know if that's an annual limit or if they change that to lifetime as well. Not going there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so June 26th, the board approved this. That means that the next step is to solicit for somebody to administer the program. This is an annual requirement that we do. For since 2009, the California Center for Sustainable Energy has always won that uh, solicitation. I suspect that they will again because every year they do it, they become more expert at doing it, than, more expert than anybody else administering a rebate program for electric vehicles. So right now, people who are purchasing or leasing electric vehicles can apply for the program. They're still being placed on a waiting list. Um, payments should begin near the end of September. By then, we'll have uh, 
an agreement in place with Center for Sustainable Energy or whomever, I don't assume anyone else will get it, but whomever is selected to administer the program and they'll gear up and start um, issuing rebate checks in the order they were received. And of course there'll be a backlog. I think that they typically can do, I don't know, a couple hundred a day. They're, they're actually receiving, in the month of June, they processed uh, 4,300 uh, rebate applications. So, so you can imagine since, since the program ran out of money in, in May, you'll have about four months of backlog, about almost 20,000 rebates of backlog. So that's going to take them several weeks to clear out. And the board, during the June 26th meeting, directed the CVRP staff to return mid-year and report to the board if it appeared that we were not going to have enough money to make it through the year. And if that's the case, then I see that we will go through this whole process of, again, again, of identifying sustainability measures. And this time, the board decided, based on uh, some conjecture on the part of some stakeholders that we were plateauing as far as the number of vehicles being placed that we had enough money to make it through the year. The, so the board punted that decision down the, down the road. But if, if we don't plateau, if we continue growing at 100% a year or year over year, then we're going to have to return to the board and, and uh, have some heavy discussions about how we continue to fund the program. Okay, the other thing we do to get people in the cars is provide a little sticker that you can put on the back of it to get into the carpool lane without anybody sitting next to you nagging you. So white deca decals, as always, are unlimited. Green decals, the 40,000 limit was reached back in May, but as part of this year's budget negotiations, there was a trailer, Senate Bill 853, that raised the cap by 15,000. So as of July 1st, DMV can start processing their glut of applications that's been sitting, sitting waiting. Beyond that 15,000, AB 2013 originally was gonna raise from 40,000 up to 85,000. So if 18, AB 2013 is passed, that would provide another 30,000 decals in addition to the 15,000 from Senate Bill 853. Uh, AB 2013 right now, it passed the assembly in May of 2014. Last I saw, I looked today to see where it was, it was amended in the Senate on June 12th, and there appears to be no rush in the Senate to get this bill out of, out of the Senate and before the governor. So it may be that we only see 15,000. If this second bill gets approved, then we'll see more. There may be some negotiations as to whether or not we see 30,000 more or something smaller. And that's all I have. Questions? Yes? The idea of holding that up, because that's, that's been going for a long time now. First, he said the Senate maybe Yeah, I... It, it seems like it made it through the assembly pretty quickly. I think that the Senate is hearing a lot of uh, information that would encourage them not to, to add this many more um, decals, probably from Caltrans. That's strictly conjecture on my part, but Caltrans originally, when there were 65,000 uh, yellow decals for, for hybrids, they were adamantly opposed to raising the cap to 65,000. So I can imagine that they can't be too uh, excited about seeing 85,000 green on top of a, a large pool of white decals out there. It, it'll just bring the carpool lanes to a, to a grinding halt. Actually, it's already to demonstrate that it's, they actually announced that and it's, it's a small portion. It, it's what? It's a small portion. They actually did look at that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have not been following it closely, but, but I can tell you that was Caltrans' original 
concern under the green under the yellow decal program. Other questions? All right, thanks. So I don't know, how many uh, how many people are affected by the uh, limit going from um, two per year to two lifetime? How many people have already hit the limit? How many of you are leasing? Yeah, okay. Whoops, sorry. So that's something that, that uh, would be interesting to think about. And, okay. Okay, next, um, well, Ralph, we have you, I think, on board. Oh, no, actually, I was going to quickly touch on the, the grant. You heard of their prior meeting that uh, some of our partners had, and, and people in the region, we as well as the partners and, and others in the region that applied to the C, for CEC grants, they were giving away, planning to give away $6 million to, for California expansion of um, alternative fuel infrastructure. And at that point, we had not gotten any confirmation that we would be, that our grant was, it was approved, but it was not awarded at that point. Uh, you heard at the last meeting that the South Shore uh, Tahoe and uh, the uh, El Dorado along the, the uh, 50 corridor, they got approved for uh, $60,000, which is great, that's good. Um, and uh, some of the Kaiser hospitals in the region have gotten the approval. Well, the good news in the last, uh, in the last week is that uh, the SACOG uh, proposal of uh, half a million dollars for quick chargers to, um, oh, actually, let me do the woodwork. This one, actually, let me hit this one first, sorry. Uh, the Woodland uh, School District had put in for uh, $128,000. And that was awarded just last uh, week. And I think it's important to point out uh, to, for this, this grant in particular, that was really the, uh, the energy for this grant came, by, uh, came through just from primarily one guy uh, here that's behind the camera. That it wasn't for him and his yeah. perseverance that this wouldn't have never made it in. And uh, so I think, with, uh, Oigen, would you uh, stand up? Just really, I don't know, maybe you got to come around and stand in front of the camera for a moment just so that we record you. Here. Uh, oh yeah, this is, and this is not the only thing that you've done to keep uh, building out the infrastructure. If I had it off to you, I think we all really appreciate the kind of work that you do and the, the uh, perseverance and the tenacity that you show on this. Uh, it's just great. So workplace with public access. All right, so that's out. That did just that's just super. And then uh, with the with SACOG, uh, they were, they were awarded the five hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, a grant for doing the uh, for doing fast chargers uh, fast charging pilots at Nugget stores in the region. And that also will help uh, those folks that are in uh, multi-unit housing or multi-unit dwellings so that they, um, well, they don't have their own garage that they can charge with, so they can quickly go out and get these, uh, their cars charged up. Keith, did you have anything you wanted to add to this one? I know you were also involved in it with the city. Help support that. Uh, well, Sacramento Clean City is definitely supported. There also was another application, I don't know if you're talking about that. The, the SMUD one, or? Yeah, that was to, to actually help keep some upgrades for a city garage. Did it get to be a smart one? Yeah, I didn't get it. Uh, it was actually disqualified. I don't even know why. Yeah, I guess we should maybe follow up and maybe build that over. Yeah. So, figure out what we can do to make it better next time. But I think also it's important that, that SMUD also, you were a contributor. SMUD was a contributor to this, this proposal as well. It was uh, there's a lot of joint work that, uh, that's gone in that. Uh, no, I, I don't. In fact, the, the person that was actually the lead behind this, uh, um, Rafe, is actually on vacation. I don't even know if he knows about it yet. I would hope it's not. He was. The EV go charger and no, I, I would. Sus I would suspect that's not going to happen. But I, we really, I, I really don't know. And uh, Rafe was on vacation on the fourth of July, and this was announced on the third. So I think he was gone all last week and still this week. 
So this would be a surprise to him when he gets back. Um, okay. Uh, oops, I jumped for two slides. Ralph, do you want to come up and share some things with us? Yeah. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ralph Trout. I'm the project manager at SPUD for the EV infrastructure and fast charging projects. As you just heard, we uh, won the announcement with regards to the fast charging. We won the we uh, won the half million dollars from the CEC for the fast charging projects. St. Cog will com uh, will match that with another half million, so it'll be one million dollars. St. Cog will be the project administrators for the grant. SMUD will be the project man uh, the uh, project manager for the fast charging project at both Nugget locations and at the Sacramento Food Co-op. With regards to the project design, um, it's my project with regards to the design, business model, and layout. It will be, the infrastructure will be designed with two fast chargers, two level two EBSCs. Green Lots will be the, providing the payment system controls just like we do here at SMUD headquarters. The EVSC level two will be an Eaton OCCP commandable control unit through Green Lots as well. So be exactly what you're used to working with today, just at those other two, other three locations. With regards to what's going on that we're working on right now that we're looking forward to, um, we are almost done with our financial lease agreement with the City of Sacramento for the Amtrak station, electric vehicle charging parking lot facilities there. Um, it's been a long time coming, it's been a lot of work, but we're almost there. We hope to have the agreement done uh, this week or early next week to be, and then start breaking ground right after the 15th of July for the trenching and the installation of the conduit and pulling the 21,000 kV line from the back of the facility out front where we're going to need to put the infrastructure. As far as the equipment being installed, Sa City of Sacramento has to finish the Sacramento uh, Amtrak station remodeling effort through a federal grant. Once they're done with that project, we will come in and then install the EV charging equipment. Tentatively, it's on or about March of next year. We'll see how close the city is with keeping to their schedule. And as soon as they're done, we'll be able to go and install that. The second, or that'll be the second site within our services district. The last and third site will be Citrus Heights, out at Antelope Road and I-80 at the Rayleigh Shopping Center, owned by Weingarten uh, Property Real Estate Group. Weingarten is a national chain. They're headquartered out of Dallas. They like the project. Um, they've agreed to with the terms and conditions. Well, again, we intend to have a signed agreement with them uh, end of next week. And then we'll go out for bids for a general contractor and hope to have that site up and running by October 1st. And same, same exact models I described early, two fast chargers, two level twos. Um, and uh, so that will be up and running this year. Um, so with uh, our three sites, plus the CEC grant, those three sites, Within the Sacramento area, we'll have six DC fast charging parking lots up and running by the end of uh, 2015. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Is the airport still in play? The question was the airport. Sacramento Airport, as most of you are aware of, we've been in negotiation with BP, who's the owner of the property. And um, because of their financial agreement with the county and with the franchisee, they have final right of refusal. Our negotiations with BP, marketing, sales, and the state of California BP went really well. When we sent the contract to BP in Chicago, we got a letter back said, thanks, no thanks, goodbye, good luck. Um, that doesn't mean the airport's not going to happen. It just means it's not going to happen at the gas station. We're very seriously considering moving that entire design over to the cell phone waiting lot. Um, but my budget for this year will be exhausted with the Amtrak station and with the Citrus Heights location, so I'm going to have to go back to the executive management team, get additional funding for 20 or 15, and then go back and approach the county and see if we can't do it something then. But again, um, that's not my decision. If you like the idea at the airport, you need to make sure the executive committee, you know, the general manager and the board knows that that's what you want, because if I don't get funded, I don't build it, okay? SMUD, SMUD general manager and the SMUD board. My projects come from their allocations, okay? I don't get funding just like the normal business unit does within SMUD. I get special funding because this is a return on investment equals zero. ROI equals zero. This is a very special budget funding effort. So, yeah. 
Yes. Question. What about the possibility in the long term economy lot for just level one charging? Level one charging at the long term parking area? Yeah. At in the parking garage itself? No, the long term. Oh, out there in the dirt. Out there in the dirt? Uh, um, I don't know. I'll talk, I can talk. I used to, to know the manager out there. Uh, we can talk to them about um, level one charging, level one charging at the long term parking lot out there in the dirt. Um, the biggest problem is going to be where and where we have infrastructure to pull power. So that's going to be our biggest issue. I don't think there's a problem with it technically, other than where, where do we have a substation line that we can pull into there. One of the still present concerns that I have and that other Tesla drivers have is you know, leaving a Tesla unplugged for two weeks or so for a European trip or wherever. Yeah, long. They're really very unhappy left unplugged. Yeah, EVs don't like to be left unplugged for a very long time. We had a spark when the spark <coughs> went our grand opening. We had a spark GM left their spark EV here for two weeks unplugged, and I didn't know that it was unplugged. We went in to start it, and it was big time dead. So yeah, I'm very well aware of the technical issues with regard to leaving an EV unplugged. So yes, any other issues concerning the DC SMUDs, DC fast charging, EV charging, parking thing? Yes, Dave. Laguna Bond, is that happening or not? Laguna Bond, um, actually, um, the city of Elk Grove has said that down near Grant Line, the abandoned um, fashion mall, uh, the owner of the taken over that project wants to put an EV fast charging parking lot at that site. And they said that they were Elk Grove uh, City Hall was going to contact us directly once they had uh, spoken with the property management and the developer. And we haven't heard back. We said, yes, we would love to talk to them at like uh, 2020. I don't know the timing. I have no idea on the timing. Anybody else? Questions, concerns, what we're doing? Like I said, if you like what I'm doing and you want to see more of it, it's got to come from the board of directors because my projects are OI equals zero. So they have to allocate a budget for me and I'll build it. Otherwise, we're almost done. Yes, sir. Um, maybe this is for Guy. In one of your next emails, can you tell us the precise name of the program? So if we were to want to send a letter or appear at a SMUD meeting, we actually know. It's that. called, this program's called Electric Vehicle DC Fast Charging Project. Okay. Electric. Electric Vehicle DC Fast Charging Project. That's all you need to know on the, on the letterhead, subject matter, and they know who I well, am and what's going on. Perhaps a gentle reminder from guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the board and who else? The general manager. General manager. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. I thought uh, the DC charging was through a grant, a federal grant. No, the funding, the question was uh, the funding from a federal grant for my project? No. Um, the initial funding and the research to figure out how to do this and develop the cost model and the due diligence and what are the legal issues, what are the uh, liability issues and all that, that was covered through the carbon credit sales, AB32 funding. Uh, we had a chunk of change and they said, well, we think this is a viable option for uh, doing good and doing the right things for the general public. And we didn't have a cost model. We didn't understand the business model at all, at all, zero. And so we f went out there and figured it out and spent many months working all the technical and legal issues with it. And we used that money to pay for all that due diligence. So what was that amount of 800000 for originally 10 chargers? Yeah, the originally, the thought, the 844000 was my original operating budget. 844000 the projection at the time. And again, there was no financial model to validate that number. It was like, is it, is it close? Is it close enough or don't know? So let's go figure it out. So that was the initial target. They said $80,000 for DC fast charging parking lots. Sounds reasonable. Let's build 10 of them. Sounds reasonable. Well, during the due diligence phases of 20 year uh, 13, we found out that fast chargers fully built and complete, installed and just purchased is right around 29,000. Okay, so call it 30. That's just for the fast charger, okay? Well, you started with 80, now you're down to 50. And then you have to have building permits. Well, building permits want drawings. So now we didn't have money set aside for the non-recurring engineering effort. So we have to go out for bids, select a contractor who can generate all the civil, mechanical, electrical drawings, and create the site plans necessary to submit to the county and to the city for your building permits. That was 45,000. 
So now I'm at 50, now I'm down to five. Now I'm down to 5,000 left. 45,000 per? Yeah. So I've got 5,000 of my original budget left. I haven't bought any level twos. I haven't done any infrastructure work at all. I haven't done anything with regards to the site, site preparation or talk to the property owner. And then we got into, well, our side of the business with regards, what are our, our insurance company, what's SMUD's insurance company going to say to us with regards to us owning and operating these EV charging parking lots? Well, we're self-insured for the first two million. Beyond that, we have this policy that kicks in from Farmers Insurance Company. And they said, you will have a very high grade, high definition, video monitoring, emotion, emotion sensitive with lighting control system trips. Holy cow. You know how much that was? That's 36,000 per site. I had 5,000 left, now I'm running in the negative red. I haven't spent any, I haven't even done anything yet with regards to the property. So I'm already negative. So the total cost, including security system, light, light controls, the equipment, infrastructure, cable conduit, and line extension, line extension costs, conduit, and primary uh, transfer upgrades, and then including general contractor fees at $145,000 to build it, is $315,000 per site. $315,000 per site. Okay? Well, we had no idea. So that was uh, the executive committee and the board were like, Holy cow, how can it be that expensive? Well, you don't know what you don't know until you start digging in and, and, and doing your due diligence. And, and now we know that. And it's kind of interesting if you follow the PUC, uh, San Diego Gas and Electric just submitted documents to the PUC for 5,500 EV charging parking lots in their service district. Well, how much money did they ask for? $100 million rate based program. $100 million. If you look at the numbers in their estimates, Boy, they look awfully close to my numbers. Holy cow, they look really close to like exactly my numbers. So, yeah, so the word's getting out there. The utilities understand. We're sharing it with everybody. This work is great work, but it ain't cheap. And the longest, most difficult part of the process is the property negotiations. Um, we love City of Sacramento. We love their doing business with City of Sacramento. But we started with them back in January, and here it is almost end of, you know, July, what, 15th? and we still don't have an agreement. And that's not their fault, it just is what it is with regards to property agreements. Same thing with Weingarten. We started negotiating with them back in last December, and we're almost done with that negotiation today. Again, months, many months. And every time you go a month and slip, what does that do to your project schedule? What does it do to your project cost? Because now I, I'm still getting paid, but I'm not producing anything. There's nothing of any value coming to you as the consumer. So does that explain, help you understand that $335,000 per site plus nine months of negotiations with regards to a sublease or licensing agreement to even go in and build something? And then they got up for bids for the general contractor, then license the contractor, award the funds, buy the hardware, dig the hole, bury the conduit, pull the wires, install the EV infrastructure, get the city inspections, close the holes, get the city to issue a permit to, to smud, to pull the meter, to install the meter, turn on the lights. Wow. That, it doesn't matter if level, his question, what level one, level two, you still gotta get power to the source, guys. It doesn't matter. D, you think, oh, that's because of DC fact. No, there's primary power. You still need primary power. You, you can't just say power over there and power over there. Well, where are the wires? That's where it starts to get expensive when you start pulling wires and lines and then you've got to put transformer and distribution network and then the city uh, authority having jurisdiction requires uh, main panels. You've got a main disconnect switch. For the fast charger project, the main panel disconnect switch was $6,500. Just that one, one part. Because it has to be rated per National Electric Code at max power, max wattage, max amps. Has to. Because it's the last, oh my gosh, turn off everything off. When the fire department comes rolling in, how do we just make this thing safe? So, yeah. Reality check. <laughs> Have you compared your numbers to the Tesla take them to build out the supercharging network? Uh, Ted, the question was about Tesla supercharging network. Um, the Folsom Mountain Mall has a Tesla supercharger out there. Um, um, Tesla provided the fast charging equipment 
and installed it. They gave us the load calculations. We then in put in the transformer, transformer systems, and all the voltage controls and step down. Our cost just for the transformer step down, and it was a short run, it was only six feet, to come off of the 21 kV line to our system and then go to Tesla. Just going that distance was $26,000. I was just asking because they, they have the most superchargers right now out there, so I'm just seeing if they've gotten. Cheaper over time, right? It'd be, Roosevelt Electric usually comes to these meetings. It'd be really interesting to ask them how much it costs for the Gallery Mall with regards to that site that was just built out there. You know, if you have contacts with Roosevelt Electric, why don't you ask them? Because they just finished building one for Tesla out there. I have no idea what their price was. So, yes, sir, question? Uh, do you still want SMUD in the pay cost? Do you still want, do you still want SMUD? I don't if you want to give me. Well, I mean, I mean, if I tried to cost 300000 we're never going to get to the uh, numbers that Tikal wants for quick charging. It's all about cost with regards to 1Z, 2Z, 3, 4. If, if we, uh, what could get us out there quickly, look what San Diego Gas and Electric is doing. They're buying 5500 with a $100 million rate action. They're going to do this in five years. If I had that kind of budget, and I approached uh, my suppliers and said, I don't want two. I want 200. What's the price difference? Significant. Again, it's orders of magnitude, and that, that in itself will help this industry significantly when we can get into those kind of volumes. When you need two here, four there, five there versus hundreds, well, that's going to help. That's help a lot. And then the NRG model is a good model to look at. Look how much money it costs them to do it, how many thousands of those systems they put in because of the fact they're into thousands, not one here, two there, three there. Boy, you guys wore me out. <laughs> so that's basically it in a nutshell. Like I said, what's next? What you should be looking for? Citrus Heights will be open this fall, Amtrak next spring. Um, then the property negotiations with the other three sites, with the California Energy Grant and SACOG. Property, I, already, I know those the property negotiations already started because as soon as we got notification that the grant was awarded, we said, who are we working with? Found out who the property owners are and also who the grocery store owners were, got names and phone numbers. So we're already starting down that path of what is the sublease agreement going to look like. So, I mean, the ink's barely dry on that notification and we're always trying to figure out what those legal documents look like. Yes? Yes, uh, in accordance with the Department of Transportation, we have to post signage for EV charging parking lots with regards to state rules, and there's also county rules and also city rules. Um, for charging parking areas, the, the signage it says one hour for fast charge only. You have signs up that say fast charger only, um, and then you have an, uh, that's up to the discretion of you guys how you want to do it at the city. But at SMUD, we decided not to post a sign that says beyond one hour you will be towed and enlist a towing agency in their phone number. It's at, that's at, at the owner's discretion. For SMUD, we're not going to do that. Now, at the city lot, they can do whatever they want. It's at the owner's discretion. Um, so those are the signs. We, handbook uh, 130 is going to change with regards to signage at the site with regards to the, the fee that you will pay for the electricity. Um, our signs that we have out are compliant because they're greater than the, the, the font has to be greater than half an inch on your local sign. But you now are required to have a sign at street side and the font has to be greater than seven inches. So I just read that this morning. I called our, aid, our group that handles the signages. We have to create the uh, drawing. Once we get a credit, got to go to vector file, then have to go out for bids. Then I, then I get the down select the vendor, then I order it, and then I install it. So I'm probably a couple of months out before I'll be compliant. But that's just those couple of signs. And well, the signs that you see over here at the fast charging parking lot, what do you think that cost? Anybody have any idea? Come on, you guys can get close. Pretty close. They were almost $625 each, plus labor, because I can't install these, so we have to have a contractor. Because of our rules with labor unions, we have to have a contractor come in and install them, pour the concrete, put in the post. Um, you want that job? <laughs> Yeah, and, and then, of course, um, we have our SMUD branding, our wave with the colors and our little dot with the color in there, and 
all that has to be branded and all that branding has to be approved by the city branding department. So we had to file, that was $1,600 filing fee with the design of the branding to get approval by the city so I could put in those signs. And then it was $5,500 for the building permit. Um, but I, I gotta tell you, the, the planning department down that town, they love us here at SMUD because they turn that building pit around in just days. I'm like, hallelujah, something went right. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Hey, war be out. Cool. <laughs> you know, if I, I think back uh, a year ago when this, or more than when this all started, and I remember the time we were thinking, uh, what was that, how's that phrase go, to boldly go where no utility has gone before? Uh, it was, you know, there wasn't anybody out there showing you the way. You really did have to figure a lot of it out, and a, a huge learning ex exercise, not just valued, I think, for you as SMUD, but I think everybody else is, getting, is learning from it as well. So I really, again, I think all our hats are off to you, what you guys are doing and, and the challenge, and we recognize the challenge that you've gone through. So and speaking of pioneers, that's kind of a nice segue over to uh, Matt uh, with the city of Sacramento. We guys have been leaders in terms of providing uh, infrastructure for electric cars and supporting the electric car conversion. Uh, you know, this, uh, not only this room, but I think We've got 400 people on our mailing list. I hear from all the time on how much they like going down that Sacramento City garage is. And they're all there at the same time, I think. So. 140 now. now. So this is what success smells like. People you know, get up and start yelling back at you. Yeah, yeah exactly. So can you uh, take that? Did you have any slides with all you No. Okay. So Matt is uh, element is with the uh, manager, the city uh, garages, Sacramento yeah. city garages. Actually, uh, I'm the parking manager for the city of Sacramento. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, we do consider ourselves being the pioneers uh, for the electric uh, vehicle charging. Um, you know, I heard. Uh, I think Guy Hall said, you know, the or Mark actually said uh, in 2003 the first electric car came to California, and we started our program back in 1994, where we, we had one vehicle that was charging out there. Um, it was probably a converted VW um, that was out there charging. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, think, I, I trip over his cord every once in a while. Um, you know, we, we had very few revisions uh, in our policy um, since 1994. Um, we had a few revisions uh, in 2000. And uh, you know, fast forward to 2014, uh, we have had no revisions to our policy. Um, you know, I've been getting a lot of. Uh, I also heard a uh, um, guy um, talk about the 100% year over year, and that's exactly what we've been experiencing in our parking garages. How many of you are are users of our our parking infrastructure? Uh, so. What you would know is um, we have 575 people on the program. We have 86 charging units in our garages. It's, uh, you know, we, we've had quite a few challenges in the last um, couple of years, um, you know, trying to keep up with the demand. Uh, if most of you don't know, uh, our program allows for free parking and free charging in our parking garages. And so if you have if you have a 100% electric vehicle, you can park for free in a city parking garage. So that's a pretty good deal. At $185 a month, you would be paying to park in that same parking garage. We subsidize about over $1.3 million in fees. We're an enterprise fund, and we're subsidizing that through this program. So there's. There's quite a bit of challenges that, that we're experiencing, some growing pains, if you will. And you know that's why we're presenting before you today. We're taking a look at the policy that we have currently. Our current policy, like I said, was uh, back in 2000. And um, the way that it works is that when we, receive, when we exceed 5% of transactions, uh, that are EV transactions, we, um, our by resolution that was adopted in 2000, are required to charge 
of the market rate in the parking garages. We have exceeded 5%. So um, what we're looking at is we're looking at the policy right now. And we're, we're trying to see what we could do better um, to, make it, to make it work. I get telephone calls recently. Uh, we've uh, put time limits to our um, parking stations, um, which are four hours. We, we worked with Mark, uh, you know, and we worked with uh, David over at City. You know, we, we didn't just do it blindly because, you know, I'm an EV owner now and I have those range anxieties too. And, and so we wanted to work with people that actually, you know, have these same, you know, anxieties that we would, uh, any of you would. So, um, you know, so, so we put the four hour um, limits in place and our, our, our signs have teeth, right? Because we, we go in and we write you a citation, we'll write you a $52 citation if you exceed that. And then, you know, we put some, because we can't crowd out revenue just to have spaces sitting empty. We don't see that during the day, the nine, you know, nine to five. You have 100% utilization in, in the EV charging stations. But on the weekends, you may have 20%. Uh, at night, you may have 20%. So we put time limits to them to, because we may have a special event or something. And, you know, if we can, uh, you know, park, any kind of car in a parking space, that's what we want to do. We don't just want people to drive around and not able to find parking when we have valuable parking sitting, sitting available. So, you know, I, I, I got the email the other day. It seems like we're, we're having this growing trend and we need to take a look at it. And, and we're going to do that. That's our commitment is that we're going to change that as, as the times go. I've heard Hummers are parking in there. It's yes. pretty funny. It's a good picture, right? Um, you know, I'm hearing from EV customers saying they're concerned because, you know, when they get there, before they get there at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning, these things are full. They're at, they're at capacity. They don't have a chance to, um, you know, park and charge because somebody may be only charging at work and not sharing the charging uh, between home and, and work. So those are the concerns that I'm hearing uh, as well. There's not enough charging stations. I have 86 of them. That's a lot. Um, our, and it's not, you know, charging stations aren't as expensive as Ralph was saying, uh, not the ones we buy anyway. It's the backbone. It's the infrastructure. I could spend $100,000 on a transformer and, you know, not get to where we need to be. And so the problem is our backbone currently is at capacity. I couldn't add another charger. So what do people do? They see a wall outlet, you know, 10 strings, you know, long in a garage. They're plugging it in. All of a sudden, my panels are burning up down at the, uh, at, at, at the electrical room because I got 20 cars parking in electric, you know, just regular 110 outlets. And so they keep popping breakers. So then they go personally and you know trip to break breakers because they want to charge their vehicles, and which is causing a, a fire hazard. It's causing it's causing issues. So we put locks on them, and we changed the locks the other day on one of our garages because it's just it's becoming too much of a fire hazard for us. And we'll work on you know getting that repaired, but for right now it's just too much of a a hazard. There's no revenue from the program. Like I said, uh, we're $1.3 million. Nothing's going back into the program. If there's no grant money, there's nothing going back into the program. Um, our policy is not in line with other, other policies um, around town. So the state is charging, the county's charging, and we're not charging. Our policy is, is uh, outlived its course it's, since, you know, it's, it's been around a while. We need to look at how to move people and get people in and get more people charging. <coughs> Grow the infrastructure, basically. There's been a, a recent desire to put uh, charging systems in the right-of-way. So we're looking at how we can achieve, uh, you know, I seen it on the first slide, you know, there was a charger in the right-of-way, um, you know, with, at the Starbucks, right? 
well, that's, that's great. How do we get it there? Because we may have the idea to put it there, and it may only cost you know, $10,000 to do that, but nothing in place right now would put that charger where it was pictured in the right of way. Uh, we have ADA compliance rules that we need to um, follow. We have structures that have, are 30, 35 years old, and we put chargers in randomly, you know, since 1995, <laughs> and now we're being told that, you know, we have to have ADA compliance in some of them, and so uh, we're, we're lacking there because we were already ahead of the game and we, we didn't, that rule, you know, kind of caught us. I think it's one. I think it's one per um, garage. Uh, just one per garage. Yeah, one Not per. Per number of no. Mm -mm. And it doesn't have to be marked ADA. It just has to be ADA compliant, where you know you're on level ground and and have all those amenities. Not all of our chargers are hooked up to the uh, networks, so um, you know people can just unplug and plug in and. You know, they don't have to have a, an account. So, so what are we doing about all this? Well, we're getting out there. We're meeting with you. We want to hear your challenges. I'm sure you guys get, get there early in the morning at City Hall Garage and, and are frustrated. And then, you know, uh, Mark and I become partners. And, you know, he backs out and I, I jump in. And, you know, that never really gives you that opportunity um, to get in there and get that charge that you need to get home to El Dorado Hills. Um, so we need to update the policy. We need to um, develop a policy for, for on-street um, right-of-way um, charging. And we need to grow our infrastructure and uh, take the money that we're, we're making and put back into the, to the backbone of our system. The future, uh, Ralph hit on it. A, a little bit. Uh, we're working with SMUD uh, to put in uh, at capacity. It's going to be about 13 chargers in total. Um, two of them level three, two of them uh, level two, that, which is provided by SMUD, five of them level two, which will be provided by the city, and uh, four of them will be a level one charging at, at the depot. Um, we're also um, taking one of our parking garages, the east parking garage, and we're building an arena. So we're taking those uh, charging stations that belong to us and we're going to be moving them around and hopefully maybe taking out one of the paddles here and putting some over at the, uh, at the train station uh, just to keep our infrastructure uh, as strong as it is. So, you know, I just wanted to tell you about you know, our concerns, I wanted to hear from this group who are actual EV drivers about your concerns and then we'll take that, Keith, Keith and I uh, will take that back and consider that stuff when we're developing this policy um, to keep our infrastructure growing. So anybody have any general concerns about the city parking lots? Yeah. Well, I come in from Woodland, so it's important just distance-wise to have a place to charge, and I've given up on charging there. There has been a small improvement with the two-hour spaces. I mean, there's, that's the best chance of getting a charger if you're visiting. Mm -hmm. uh, I did send the picture in about the Hummer, who was an actual Hummer park in the charging. Uh, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about as a guest and visitor that comes to Sacro or who comes to Sacramento finding charging in the evening or things like that, because I think your hours that you put on there are very confusing and not helpful to an EV driver. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that EV charging is only until 5 o'clock and afterwards anybody can park there, I'm bringing money to Sacramento, mm -hmm. even if with my free pass, but I don't use it that much. Right. You know, I'm still bringing money by spending money in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's appreciated in any sense. And I wish you would have an advisory group of EV drivers, people that work there, people that visit, and we have to find some kind of agreement. Sure. Well, you know, it, those charging systems are there to charge vehicles. If that's going to be full, 
with EV cars, then that's great. But if they're sitting empty, we need to utilize that space because you know Sacramento has parking issues. And so we just can't have spaces sitting empty, um, whether it's gasoline or, or EV, we need, to, we need to park them. And so if, if, it, if the infrastructure is, is growing, and we all know it is, then we need to look at our times and, and our dates so uh, to make it more. We have quite a few 24-hour spaces, and I think each garage we've kept 24-hour spaces. And if that's not enough, we're willing to, to grow that. So there's a little banner. Well, if it, if it doesn't have a time date, it's 24-hour. So there's a banner that goes underneath the sign, and if it says from 5 or 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., that means it's only EV charging from 5 to 8 or 8 to 5. If it doesn't have anything, it's 24-7. Yeah, so when you drive up and it says EV charging only, and it doesn't have a time or a date, it's EV charging only. Well, that's as much our fault in the second week, because we sat down with these guys and negotiated about the signage and, and identified what was going to be 24 hours and what wasn't happening. Well, I thought the 8 to 5 is a good way to limit the charging, so mm -hmm. 4 hours or 2 to 2 hours. Mm -hmm. But after 5, that's my understanding of the sign. You can park there, you know, four hours or five hours or yes. six hours. Yes. But that's not how it is. No, if there's a banner sign at the bottom of the sign, it, it tells you when that sign is, reg is, is active. So that sign is active from eight to five. So if, that, if it's after five, if it's 501, that sign is no longer active. It's not EV and it's not four hours. So if there is no time at the bottom, it's 24-7, seven days a week. Uh, so we visited these spots on like an evening or a weekend, mm -hmm. and there are and many of them that are gas cars in there, and they're allowed to park there. Mm -hmm. Now the rest of the garage is, is still 80% empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, they could have easily parked somewhere else, but they didn't have to because the closest ones to where they were going to park. Sure or to the uh, theater, and they're parking there because they're allowed to park in the evening and blocking off EV access. So it's not that there's nowhere else for them to park, it's that the kind of open space. Right. But these are because inherently of what power was. These are then get consumed up right away so that, you know, just making them restrict the EV only during certain hours of the day mm -hmm. is, is a little problematic. Yeah, you know, I'd be more than willing to, to work with a subcommittee, Mark, and talk offline about how we, how we get it to perfect, right? And, and uh, I have no issues with changing it back um, to 24-7. You know, they are the most convenient spots. I mean, pretty much all of, the, all of the EV chargers have been put right at the front because we want it at our front door. Yeah, except those. Mark put those in. I, put I think one of my concerns, or I don't know, pet peeves, has, has been what you just said. Is I actually have always questioned why they have to be the most convenient spots. Because frankly, I don't like the inference that EV drivers are so lazy that we can't walk, you know, 100 yards, that we have to have the closest spots. But, and if they're not the closest spots, they're not going to be. We're not going to have people tempted. To, to use them and block them. In, in the, in the uh, city hall garage, it was great when you added all the ones on the roof mm -hmm. because, you know, not that they're ever available, but at least, you know, they're at night or kind of late afternoon, you're not going to have other cars blocking them. So I, I would, I, as you're planning for the future, I would suggest you, you know, reconsider whether or not they have to be the most convenient spots in the place, because I just think you're asking for trouble when you do that. And I'd also just say that, I mean, I've been in the program for about a year and a half. I love the free parking. I always knew it was going to end. It wasn't going to last forever. I like the idea of just, you know, paying half or something, having some sort of, I mean, I don't use it that much, but it's, it is kind of a nice perk. It is a nice incentive for people to, um, to get and use the cars, but I, 
you know, obviously it's against my own self-interest, but I completely understand that it's not sustainable. So I, mean, I would certainly be one who would not be berating you like, don't take my free parking away. Yeah. You know, these are the gas stations of the future, uh, the parking garages. You know, I believe that. I'm, I'm invested as well as, as all of you are. And I believe in the technology. And uh, I want to continue to invest in it and build a, upon the infrastructure. We had, we're lucky to have uh, Keith Leach, who's, who's done great work to get us, get us this, because it's, it's, it's not really because of me, it's because of Keith, that we're able to get these grants and, and get this stuff going. I just provide the space uh, for it. So. Well, the other thing, too, again, um, I, I, like you, I pretty much gave up trying to find a spot. And I think you should also be revisiting. Um, you know, I, I just live six miles from downtown. Um, there are times when I'm picking someone up at the airport and going back and forth. I could really use it. I mean, I could really use the spot, and I can't get it. Right. So I think from just the pure economics, you need to make it less attractive for people to just get the, the freebie right. of it. And frankly, the better freebie is being able to park at a subsidized rate. If I have to, like, if I have to pay the 20 cents a kilowatt hour for the power, that's no problem. I mean, that, so I think okay. part of your congestion problem is the fact that you're giving the power for free and, and you know, kind of the lights go off in people's brain like, oh, it's free, I'll charge there, even whether they need it or not. And it, and it helps with, it causes range anxiety, right? Because, you know, as a, as a new EV owner, you know, I'm driving to work and I'm like, I got to get back to work so I could charge, right? And I don't have to, I don't have to charge at home. Why would I, right? Uh, because I get it for free at work. So, so kind of, I'm constantly thinking myself, you know, how do I, how do I get back to work? You know, is this enough to get back to work? And, and so you, I'm kind of causing my own anxieties in this whole thing, and it's been a really good experience for me uh, to actually go out and buy one so I could see what the future is actually um, going to entail and how we deal with this in the future. It's actually given me ideas on how to make that work. And, and charging, charging for parking is, is, is definitely, because we have some inequities in policy, right? And it's not that the policy is a bad policy. We think the policy is a great policy. It did its job. You know, in, in 94, 95, people had vision to actually think about this and put into the infrastructure um, and, and actually start to build it. And now all of a sudden, you know, we have 575 people on the program. And it's, I heard, 4,000 sold in, in uh, June, right? Yes. 4,000 sold in June, it's like our garages are going to be completely full with EVs um, here, which is great. And so we need to keep up with that infrastructure. And, uh, you know, whatever we get from it, we need to put back into it. So. I mean, my view is you prime the pump. Every time you don't have to prime the pump, the system is doing it in California. Right. Doing it. To me, the, the biggest concern I have is I want to be able to go somewhere and find a charger. I'll gladly pay for parking like everyone else, which I have to And I'll pay for electricity because I'd be paying for it at home. So to me, the greatest service you have is providing a spot where I have a known ability to get charging for it. That, that eliminates the range of exit. Right. And the other piece is just paying your, your fair share for parking and electricity like you'd be doing anywhere else. So I could see a phase out program where you say, okay, we, we, we finished priming the pumps, but we will solve the range of exit by having a facility there. Right. And that, that, I was making a lot of trips down the San Luis system. Their parking garage had it. I'd gladly pay those people a fee yeah. just because I knew I could get back and be done. Well, th these are great comments uh, to be hearing. I wanted to just say, sort of to be maximum to your reason too, that you know, I've been watching for two and a half years I've had the leave, and I've been watching how spaces either are or aren't available when you need them. And to really alleviate range anxiety, it seems system on one space or something like that. You know, I've been a member of Zipcar and they have a reservation system to do it online. And the car is going to be there when you need it kind of thing. You know where it's going to be. You could start thinking that way about a charging station too. You can say there's one charging station set aside. You can actually 
observe it. And for a certain length of time, a certain day, is so that you could actually count on it. Because for me, with my week, I pretty much have this child at home. And, and I don't count on charging stations anymore. Because two and a half years ago, yeah, I'd probably get one where I wanted to go. Nowadays, I really can't count on it. And without that, without that certainty, it doesn't alleviate range anxiety at all. Right. So to me, there's a need coming a little sooner here, you know, not just in city garages, but, but in, in a larger context, that we're going to have to have a new solution to that. Yes. Great call. You are thinking about moving the city charters to a uh, paid model. I think that maybe you do a tiered system, and that way you always ensure that there are a couple of units open, despite how much you charge for, for a certain team. So, tiered system, how? A tiered club. Yeah, yeah, by, by kilowatt hour. I if I, if I want to use a DC fast charger on my leaf, I'll use it in SMUD because it's 22 cents a kilowatt hour, but I'm not going to do the wheels of Nissan where it's 9.95 no matter how much I pay. Um, true in the city hall garage, if they were all charging you know, 22 cents a kilowatt hour, I'd probably plug in there. But if they had certain units that were 30 or 40 cents a kilowatt hour, I wouldn't charge it. But those would be left open for people who were coming in from out of town. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of ideas out there, um, and you guys have a lot of great ideas too, and it's kind of like on the, the cusp of what we were thinking about when we're developing this, this new policy um, that's going to work for everybody. Because we would rather see it not turn over twice, but it to turn over, you know, four times, you know, five times. So. I know I live in Elk Grove and I work out in Sacramento. It takes me 23 miles each way. It's about 50% battery there and back. You know, if I did my charging at home, you know, I could, I could probably get away with charging maybe every other day. Um, but that's not what I do now. I charge at work. And so I happen to get there early enough, you know, <laughs> 7 o'clock in the morning, it's free. <laughs> Why wouldn't I, right? So, so you but know. You also move your car when it's yeah. cold. I do. See, I do. Better. That's <laughs> and I think that the city, at your area, you have an excellent system for the people that work there, or a pretty good system that you have a group and you move the cars around. We do. It could, it could be better. We have, I've reached my ability for the limit of how many people I can reach. Some people just don't want to participate and then I revert to, to the stick. I, I have parking enforcement on speed dial and I have asked them to come out and talk <laughs> tires. And, and, and we talk tires a couple of times a month that gets people into the rotating vehicles. <laughs> yeah the the fine is uh fifty two fifty. So um, and we will find you. Well let's thank uh, Matt for coming out and <laughs> This has been a tremendous example of, of leadership, really, uh, because when you started doing this, as you said no one else had an idea of how it was going to turn out or what, how to get this uh, the ball moving, and you guys really did an outstanding job. So, again, we really appreciate that. Thank you. And we'll uh, work with uh, Mark to help with that advisory. Yes. Goody. Okay. We got our last uh, stretch in here, green lots, and are, are these two together? Is that? Oh, is this one, one presentation? Okay, so would you, would you guys like to come on up and introduce yourselves? Who gets the mic? Thank you. All right, well, put on your shirt. Hi, everyone. It's a great program. Uh, I'm Lin, Lin Koo. I'm the VP of uh, product at Green Lots. Okay, here we Oh, it's just for the camera. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm the I'm Lynn. I'm, I work as a vice president of product at Green Lots, and um, have put in a lot of uh, personal attention um, to the inaugural fast charger that we have here at the Smart Headquarters. Um, since it's one of our first um, integrations with FSEC, and also one of our first uh, DC fast chargers that we've been putting in. Uh, we're in our fourth month now in our pilot, and um, um, 
happy to see a lot of use on it. Um, I think we're averaging something around, you know, 60 to 70 uh, charge, charging sessions per month. Um, so that's very healthy use. Um, good comments on plug share, which, which uh, we like to see all the time. But, you know, we've also gone through a little bit of uh, a learning curve on both sides, I think. Um, and, you know, welcome all your feedback at any time. Um, I understand that there was a trial uh, maybe a few weeks ago using the mobile app and the payment system to access the charging stations. And, yeah, there was a bit of a learning process there. Um, please don't hesitate to send us uh, your feedback. Um, just send it to support at greenlots.com. A lot of them come to me personally. Um, and anything that we can uh, look at to improve, we will definitely put it into our pipeline. Uh, I think one of, the f one of the key things that we've made a change on was port selection on the uh, DC fast charging station. I think previously if you were using the app to start a charge, um, it wasn't clear or at least it wasn't big enough that you were starting a charge on port one or port two. Um, we made a change now that if you just hit start, it would prompt you on the app. Um, so if you have the app, please download the latest version. Um, I think the Android one should be updated already. The iOS one should be uh, uh, out in the next uh, two weeks at most um, with the latest update. But um, while we're here, you know, I welcome any questions, feedback, positive or negative. Um, we we'll make sure to go ahead. And well, I was part of that. Uh, I filmed the part where we had where people got to try out the charger and the problems they had with the chargers. Uh, I saw a big problem is you have to download the app. So if somebody comes there at midnight, mm -hmm. no one is going to come around and mm -hmm. they never use the charger. They have to download the app. Uh, once that was solved, you had to put in the station. That was a, a big problem too. Have these things been solved? That if we send out to our news group, here's the app, here's the station number to put in, that they can be prepped already, or is that still not solved? Um, y yeah, you don't have to wait until you reach the station to download the app, of course. But yeah, a lot of times, yeah. you will only find out that you need to download the app if, you, if you're first time, right? Um, the station ID is a quick five-digit number. I, I think most of you frequent users would memorize that station ID already. Um, we have the QR code there just as a convenient way of doing a, a quick one, but uh, many people don't realize that you can also manually enter the station ID. Um, and then failing which, you know, if you're not using an Android or an iPhone, um, our call center is available 24-7, and they can remotely start a charge for you and also take payment uh, for you if you're a new user with your credit card. Yeah. Oh, well, the first one is just um, you know, 200 yards down, the, the smart headquarters, the DC fast charger. Um, but as, as Ralph does his great work in rolling out more um, fast chargers and level twos, uh, across the Sacramento area, they will also be uh, green lots enabled. But in this moment, you have only one for In the Sacramento region, yes, um, that's the that's the first one. Um, in the Bay Area, we're also working uh, with the airport um, and with a number of municipalities there. Um, which will have also DC fast chargers coming up that will also be green lots enabled. Yeah. Is there any more questions? Mike, you want to say? Yes. Good evening. I'm Mike Anderson. I'm with FSEC. We built the fast charger down here at, uh, at SMUD headquarters, and uh, we're extremely proud to uh, be able to partner with SMUD on the fast chargers that they'll be installing around the Sacramento area. Uh, and I know I uh, heard firsthand from Ralph the, the headaches at the site uh, locations, but the, hopefully this will be worked out soon and we'll have uh, many more of these fast chargers around here for you guys to use. Um, we do have uh, another charger somewhat in the area, if you count San Francisco the area. Um, it's down at, um, in Belmont at the Volkswagen Electronic Research Labs facility down there. It's right off the 101 
uh, in the Redwood City, Belmont area, right next to the Oracle uh, headquarter building down there. Um, and uh, I think they're working towards having that on your network eventually, but I don't think it's, uh, though, though it is yeah. on it, it is on there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think they're charging for it yet still. I think it's still free. Uh, it is uh, free. Yeah, is free. so, uh, but that's another one in the area. It looks just like the one at Smud, except the kiosk is green instead of orange. Um, and the cabinet at that one is located back behind the, the green fence there at the facility. So, but a dual connector still for Chatamo and SAE combo. Um, so we're looking forward to, uh, to more of those being installed in the area through partners like Green Lots and, and, uh, and other, uh, other partners as well. So be happy to take any questions you guys have got on the charger or um, any issues you've had with it using it. Yes, ma'am. Well, automakers use SAE. Currently, the only vehicles on the road right now are the BMW i3 and the Chevrolet Spark EV. The Volkswagen e-Golf will be out later this fall, and that'll be the third vehicle on the SAE combo. And then with the Kia coming out uh, any day now or whenever, um, but the, I think that's going to have a fast charge port too. Um, I'm not sure when they're going to roll out the fast charge capability, uh, or at least for the for people to purchase that option. Maybe, is that gonna be available it's right away? Standard. Okay, it's gonna be a standard, okay, yeah. all right. So obviously that will, so there'll be three cars on each side, Chevy, BMW, and Volkswagen, and then Kia, Nissan, and Mitsubishi on the Chatham side. One interesting <laughs> fact is uh, the Volkswagen Charger that Mike mentioned down in Belmont, uh, probably one of the most often used, most frequently used DC fast chargers in the country uh, since we started networking it. Uh, as the last 30 days, I think we counted something like 450 charges. So an average of 10. It, I see. I see. I get, get automatic <laughs> updates when there's a comment on PlugShare, and I, and it's just it's constant on the the number of vehicles through there. Sometimes they're waiting two or three deep uh, at the charger, and it's a combination of BM, now BMWs, Leafs, uh, Sparks, uh, all there uh, trying to charge at the same time. So um, it, it's a uh, it may it may uh, drop down a little bit when they start charging people, <laughs> but then it'll probably go back up and back to back to normal. Yeah, it's a dual uh, hose, right? Yeah, it's a dual connector also. Yeah. Only have one charging at a time. Still only one car at a time. Yeah, only one power converter in that cabinet. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, it's not. No, it would take a whole another power cabinet to do a separate power conversion for the second car. Once we get more use, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. Can you plug in and, and, and start automatically? You're talking about start while one other? Uh, no, not yet, no. That, that would be what's called a queuing, and uh, that's not, uh, we don't have that capability yet to be able to do that. Or parking space either, at least here at SMUD, yeah. So then a lot of that depends on the, the way the parking's configured around the unit uh, also. Any other questions? Okay. Great. Thank you guys. Well, thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Glad you came up for that. So I do think the uh, quick charge is going to be part of the answer to the problem we were talking earlier about that range anxiety. You know, when I get there, can I find that spot? Um, but if I know there's a quick charger that can uh, help me make sure I can get back home, like maybe Jim's solution or, or others. I think that maybe help us get from range anxiety to range confidence. So everybody, uh, thank you for coming. We just let you know for the next meetings, we've got uh, the folks from uh, the 80 quarter going to be talking about their uh, charging plans and their, their rollout of some more charging. Uh, Frank Bruce from uh, BMW uh, knows a lot about the development of the i3 and uh, how it's manufactured and its capabilities. That'll be uh, quite interesting. Uh, I won't be here. Uh, I'll be on my way to, uh, uh, to Fairbanks. I'm gonna be trying to drive uh, my Tesla from um, Tijuana up to uh, Fairbanks. And we'll, uh, that'll consume much of uh, August. So uh, when you're at the meeting, just wish me luck. Maybe, I hope we don't need a moment of silence for that. <laughs> But um, I'll try to keep uh, get a site up so you can follow our progress in that. No tires on your car? Uh, not in August. So I think we'll be okay through August. So um, it'll be an adventure, certainly. So again, thank everybody for coming. Um, there is still 
snacks back in the back. If you uh, want to take some on your way out, feel free. And uh, there's shirts still up here and cards up here that if you want to uh, uh, grab some, uh, feel free to. Thank you. Oh, anything? Oh, Ralph. Um, guys and gals, um, there's been a lot of comments why we have an RFID capability for the fast charger in the level two EVCs. Um, it's now available. Uh, we talked with Green Lots and FSEC, and we've agreed if you want it, talk to them tonight before you leave. We'll help you figure it out and get you set up so that you can have a rechargeable card, just like you would a loyalty card at save, uh, save uh, Starbucks for the fast charger. You don't have to worry about the app, starting the app, call the 800 number, you just got a card, you flash it, wait for the card reader to acknowledge it, you start charging, you walk away. Awesome. And that will, awesome. that will work yes. with the other Green Lots units as well, right? See the guys before you leave. Yeah. With the units in Sacramento, yes. Okay. Yeah. But not all of the charging stations, especially level two, not all of them have RFID users. Um, so it just depends on the site. That's what goes make it user friendly for people. So, for, so let's give one last round of appreciation for SMUD for hosting us and our speakers for coming.